in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create custom doodle motion graphics in After Effects. First, I'm going to show you how to create the effect itself, and after, I'm going to show you how to apply it to shapes, logos, and text. So let's waste no more time and get straight into the video. What will you do if I am infected? Cure me? To start things off, I'm first going to show you how to create a shaded circle because believe it or not, if you can create this, you can create just about anything. So first when opening up After Effects, I recommend using a background. I'll be using this crumble paper for my background and now I'm going to click away from this layer, go up to the top and click on the circle, create a circle and you'll notice a blue shape layer appears. I'm going to align the circle to the middle so you get a better view and if I go to the shape layer, you'll notice I have different compartments in this control center called contents. When I open up the ellipse compartment, you'll notice Notice I have different elements that make up the functionalities for the ellipse and I want to add to this so I'm going to go to add and I'm going to add wiggle pads. But if you notice wiggle pad is not in the ellipse compartment it's in the content so I'm going to delete and try it again but this time I will click on the ellipse layer while I go and I add a wiggle pad and you'll notice wiggle pads is no longer in contents it is now in the ellipse layer and this is very important. Anyways when wiggle pad is added it does exactly what it says it adds a wiggle to the shape and the only settings I like to adjust is size, detail, and smooth to smooth out the corners to get a subtle wiggle effect. Once you have the wiggle where you want it, close up all elements in the compartment. If you click enter on what you have selected, you can rename this layer to avoid confusion and now I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking Control D. Just for a quick preview, you can see everything duplicated on both shapes and now on the bottom shape, I'm going to click it and add a trim path. And if you notice, the trim path only went to our circle one shape because we had it selected when we added it. For trim paths, all we're going to do is Alt and click the stopwatch, replace the expression with wiggle parentheses a number, comma, and parentheses. Also, make sure wiggle is lowercase. Now we're just going to copy this expression and do the same thing for end and do the same thing for offset. But for offset, make sure to always set the last number to 180. Now, when we look at the circle, it has a little doodle outline, and from here, the settings kind of depend on what you're going for. What I like to do is hide the first group, go back and forth in the timeline, adjusting the first number. 1 through 10 and the second number between 20 and 80 but all of this is just adjusting how much the shape will be trimmed down exaggerating the outline effect. Once you get your trim paths the way you want it and everything is copying and paste matching go ahead and bring back the first shape and if you want you can also go back and make more adjustments with the wiggle effect to further gain what you're looking for. Just make sure whatever you do to one side you do to the other. I'm showing this because I normally change the wiggle effect after I do the trim paths 90% of the time. Now we're done with the outline and I'm I'm going to close everything up and we're going to add a scribble on the inside of this layer. I am first going to go ahead and add a solid layer, color doesn't matter and once I've added this solid I am going to pull out my pen tool and make a mask on this solid layer covering up my circle. Shape doesn't matter but once the mask is in place apply the scribble effect onto the solid layer. Now when I come to the scribble effect controls I always change the color in this case I'm changing it to black and you have multiple fill options in this case I'm going to keep it on inside. The other two settings you're going to to be messing with is edge options and stroke options. Almost everything does exactly what it sounds like. I mostly adjust the angle, stroke width, curveness, and spacing. But once you have these settings where you want it, we're now going to add this to the inside of our shape. So to do this, we're going to go to the track mat, drag it over to the shape layer. And at first, the track mat will be appearing on the black lines, but we don't want this. So to change it, I'm going to go and click on this icon to change it to Luma Mat. Now I'm going to go ahead and unhide this shape and go inside the shape layer, open up the contents and when I open up the first compartment I'm going to unhide the fill and now we can see the line. To see the lines clear change the fill to white close everything down when you're done and now we're done creating the circle we just need to add some movement because right now it's way too fluent and still. So to do this go ahead and select the shape and solid layer and create a composition and now we're going to add the wiggle position effect. A speed of 1 and a wiggle amount of 10 is a good subtle movement. I do have a short video explaining how to use this but once this is in place add a effect called color range and what you can do so you can see what you're doing is add a tint to your background layer change the color to something random temporarily because we are going to get rid of these white lines so back to the color range just click on the first pen tap on an area of white and when you up the fizziness the greater amount of white disappears now to finish this off go back to your solid layer get rid of the tint and back to the shape layer we're going to pre-comp it one more time and lastly we're going to add this effect called posterize time what this does is adjust the frame 
frame rate making it less smooth giving it a more choppy jumpy look so this is what it looks like at 14 because it has less keyframes and if i go back and adjust it lower to 8 it's even more choppy and jumpy and you have now successfully created a shaded circle and i know this is kind of lame but i promise you can make just about anything out of this now that you have a good understanding on how to set everything up i'm now going to show you a few different compositions i applied this effect to to spark your creativity and to show how versatile this effect is because you could apply this to just about anything so to start things off i'm quickly going to show you how to make this shaded dollar sign which is no different than the shaded circle starting from background to the beginning you can see i have my posterized time in place lowering the keyframes and when i enter into the next composition i will put on the background and you can see i have my wiggle position in place and i have my color range blocking out all of the white and i'm going to enter the next composition and you can see my shape and solid scribble layers you can take a look at my scribble settings and when i enter into shape one you'll notice i have two groups instead of shapes and this is because when i open up one of the groups i have all the shapes inside the group and this is because when i apply the wiggle and trim pads it applies to all the shapes saving me from having to do it to each individual shape to create a group all you would do is when you're done creating all of the shapes select all of them right click and click group shapes or you can click Control g but anyways i'm going to change it back to the way i had it real quick these are my wiggle pad settings if you're curious and my trim pad has all the wiggle expressions locked in and one thing you can add for more movement is if you go to the transform group settings of this group you can add an extra wiggle expression in the position slot to give the lines in this group more movement and a tad of boldness but i'm going to close all this up and i'm going to show you what i did with the first layer group difference so you can see everything is duplicated remember the top group only needs to have the wiggle pads added and the body of my dollar sign is filled with white for the scribble effect to be track matted now last thing is you're probably wondering why i have two shapes here that are hiding that are not appearing this is because i copied and pasted them onto this shape layer up here and i did all the same steps on this shape layer the reason for this is if i hide this shape layer reappear the shapes that are below the scribble that are connected to the fill of the dollar sign the scribble is just going to scribble right over them and lastly for the scribble to fill out the dollar sign remember the scribble is connected to a mask pad so all i did was added keyframes because once you double click the mask you can move it anywhere anyways when you have this in place the way you want it remember pre-comp it add wiggle position effect for some movement add color range effect to remove all the white pre-comp it again and lastly add posterized time and this is my final result now we're gonna ramp things up a little bit and make this rocket ship and it's actually very easy and no different from what we've already been doing so of course i've already had my posterized time and my paper texture background in place going into this composition i will hide the background you can see the wiggle position you can see the color range to black out the white and for this composition i just added some position and scaling keyframes nothing too crazy when i move the timeline you can see the rocket is getting bigger and moving upwards out of the composition and that is it so now when i enter this composition this is all my shapes and solid layers and i'm going to go ahead and break it down but this is not much different from the shaded dollar sign so this first shape layer is of course the white shaded parts of the rocket ship that's going to eventually be copped out and this is group one with all the different shapes and the wiggle path group two is of course a duplicate with a wiggle path and a added trim path and i did add some extra movement into positioning but i'm going to go ahead and close this and what's new here that you might have noticed is the added trim path here what trim path does when no expression is added is it trims or grows the shape and you can control it by setting keyframes i'm going to go more in depth on this later in the video next is my solid scribble layer you can look at my settings and of course i mask it and track mac it to the rocket ship body with a luma mat attached to it and if we open up the contents of the rocket ship body shape layer it has all the rocket ship shapes in a group with the rocket ship body having a fill and the wiggle pads is of course there and if i close this and come down to group 2 this is the duplicate with trim pads added and if i open up the trim pads all the expressions are locked in with an added transformation for this group and if i close everything down i do have a trim pads here all that's being done here is i started a stopwatch keyframing 0 to 100 but i do have a way better example coming up and i just aligned these keyframes with the other layers so everything is moving flawlessly together also the mass keyframes is just me moving the mass path around to where it's taking over the rocket ship body but i'm going to close everything up and the last thing is the fire i just applied a mass solid with no scribble effect and applied a track mat to the fire shape but of course changing it to luma mat and for the fire shape contents it's just one individual shape and when i open it you can see the fill is visible showing a white fill and a wiggle pad for shape 2 to duplicate of course everything duplicated over with trim pads added and expressions are locked in and when i close all of this down it does have an extra trim pad here outside the shapes and it's just matching the other movement of all the other keyframes because the only movement in this composition that's being done is the trim pads movement and the scribble 
mass pad movement. And once I'm done here, going into the next composition, I just added the wiggle position, color range to block out the white with some simple position and scaling movement. And to end it all off, of course, I just added posterized time. And that is exactly how I went about on making this rocket ship that is not much different from the dollar sign and the shaded circle. To finish things off, I'm quickly going to show you how to apply this doodle effect to text layers and logos. It's a super simple process and very similar to what we've already been doing. It's just an extra step or two. So this is a text doodle effect that we are going to be doing and I am going to be going over the trim pad tracing part as well. So when you first open up your After Effects, go ahead and add a text layer. Type in whatever you want to type in for your text. I'll type in my name Ferg and I will also align it so it can be in the middle of the screen so you can see it better. If you go and you click on properties, you'll notice different functions of the text pop up and you want to make sure you have no fill on and add a stroke and feel free to make any adjustments to the text now because it will be much difficult to adjust it later. Once your text is how you want it, you want to come down to the text layer, right click and go to create shape from text and come down again, right click and click create mask from text. And now if we delete this text layer, put the mask over the shape layer and if we open up the shape layer contents, you'll notice that all the letters are already made into shapes and if we just open them up, it already has all of its components. We will keep fill hidden for this, but if I real quickly go through every letter, you'll notice everything's already ready to go and now I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to click Control G to group them together and now I'm going to go ahead and real quickly label it. Now everything is basically repetition. I'm going to add a wiggle path, make sure it's on smooth instead of corner and there is no perfect setting here but find a reasonable size and detail setting and this would be a good time to hide the mask layer if haven't so already and when you're done go ahead and close this up. Once everything is closed down, click Control D to duplicate it. Remember everything does transfer from one group to the duplicated one and now we will add a trim path. I will speed through this part because it's just alt clicking the stopwatch type in wiggle all lowercase with parentheses and numbers and make sure 180 is the last number for offset. Also if you would like to add more movement in this group transform section you can add an extra wiggle expression and when you're done close this up and now I will show you one way of how to do trim paths that works every time. So go ahead and select the first group add a trim path this will only be added to your first group and when you go down and open it up bring the timeline to the beginning and go start the stopwatch to the start the stopwatch now bring n down to zero move up in the timeline and bring start to 100 and make sure to put it on individually once this is done we want to go to the second group go to the transform settings for this group and bring the opacity down to zero and real quick i will show you that this keyframe does align with the final keyframe but when the text is 100 percent visible on the trim path and what i'm going to do now is move this keyframe back one frame up the opacity on this frame 100 and now when I scroll up and move the timeline I have a clean tracing of my text. The reason we did this is because if we put the opacity back to 100 and move around in the timeline because the wiggle expressions are added in this group is fighting against that particular trim path so just keep it hidden until the tracing is done and now that is everything we'll do for the shape text layer. Now when you have everything looking the way you want it close everything down that is in this shape layer and what we will be doing now is adding a solid layer for a scribble. Also instead of making an ugly mess like I have been doing, you can just use the shapes from After Effects. So for example, I'll use this rectangle, make sure the layer is selected and click and drag a rectangle creating a mask. Now add the scribble effect to the solid layer and change the color to whatever you want. And I will speed through this part because it's just me messing around with the settings to find what looks decent. But one setting I will point out is a wiggle type. It has smooth and jumpy, which is what we're kind of looking for and static, which is still, I'm going to go with jumpy. And now we're going to be adding the scribble solid to track mat the text mask and we want this mask to stay invisible so when we add the track mat you don't need to do any further steps which saves us from adding the color range later because the only thing visible right now is the scribbles. Now revealing the keyframes using the mask path tool I'm just going to drag my mask to the left and then align it with the trim pad second keyframe and drag it to the right to where it crosses the screen. One thing you will notice is sometimes the mask goes faster than the tracing of the trim path or vice versa so what I do is I just add extra keyframes where everything is aligned because it's already going to be losing frames anyway so these extra keyframes are not going to hurt the final result it's actually going to make it look better to where everything is moving flawlessly together also you can select all keyframes and easy ease them clicking f9 to smooth everything out because being smooth on this composition is a good thing and now we're going to pre-comp these layers and of course add the wiggle position next once this is intact remember we don't have to add a color range because the mask is invisible but even if you do that's fine it's not a big deal and now i'm going to pre-comp this layer and lastly, the only thing left to add is a posterized time and lower the frame rate to what you think looks best. But this is exactly how I went about on making this text, which again is not much.
much different from the shaded circle or the dollar sign. Now moving on to the last example which is how to doodle any logo. It's very similar and easy like the other so I'll go through this one just a little bit faster. So the logo I will be using is my Ferg production logo and when you place your logo in the composition scale it down while also making sure it's on top of the background layer. And when you have your logo in a good spot go ahead and go to layer and auto tracer but be sure to have some decent auto trace of your logo. What I mean by this is you can mess with the auto trace settings and if your auto trace comes out like this your logo is going to look horrible so make sure that your auto trace settings is something reasonable. I normally just mess with the turbulence and blur but every logo is different but I think that this looks okay. Now come to your logo layer and click M to open up the mask we just created through auto trace and add a shape layer. Now we're going to open up the contents and add one less amount of paths than masks that we have so in this case I have three masks so I'll add two paths and start the stopwatch. Now I'm going to copy and paste the mask path of the auto trace that I want which are mask 2 and mask 3 and paste them onto the path shape layer location click ctrl c and ctrl v to copy and paste and this is converting the auto trace mask into the path onto the shape layer. Once you're done if needed scale your paths down and you can now delete your logo layer and right now our trace isn't visible because there are no attachments added but before we add anything first grab both of your paths or all your paths and click ctrl g to put them in a group. Of course label the groups will be easier to identify it and if I open it up you can see I have both the paths here and now we'll add two attachments we'll add a stroke and after we'll add a fill onto this group. Now I'll speed things up but I'm just playing around with the stroke width settings and also changing the color to black there's no perfect settings here it's really just adjusting it to your liking. Now I'm going to go to fill and change the fill to white because remember this is going to be track matted and we will cop out the white later but now once this is complete we can go and add our wiggle paths and trim paths. I am going to speed up through this portion because I've explained it several times in this video already but it's nothing new it's just adding a wiggle path to this group adjust in the settings duplicate this group and add a trim path to the duplicate group add wiggle expressions and close everything down when you're done and for the scribble solid I'll briefly go through this one as well first create a new solid layer and after create your mask whether you use your pen tool or you can use one of the after effects shape like a rectangle and when you apply the scribble effect adjust the settings to something you prefer or something that will match the logo now when your scribble settings are in place we're going to track man it to the shape layer make sure the shape layer is unhidden when you track mat it and make sure the track mat is luma matte i did make a mistake here that i'm glad that i made because this will affect your final results but if you have your fill unhidden on both groups because of the trim pad tracing movement the fill will go in places you don't want it to go so to fix this go to the group that has their trim pad fill on and just hide it and now your logo is fixed the reason why we still see a fill currently is because the fill is still active on the other group and we don't want to double down on the fill we only want to double down on the stroke movement but when this is the way you want it the last thing I did was I just open up the mask path up and I just added some keyframes to make the scribble effect look like it's fulfilling my logo. Once everything is looking like how you want it to look like go ahead and grab both of these layers and put them into a composition label the composition if needed and it's the same outro add a wiggle position effect add a color range don't forget you can use a temporary tint to help you guide you to get rid of the whites but from here just up the fuzziness and go ahead and put this pre-comp into a composition layer and from here go ahead and add the posterize time and change the number to lower the keyframe so what you feel that looks best and I did forget to remove the temporary tent so I'm gonna go back in the other composition and delete it but anyways this is my final result for my Ferg production logo. Anyways that is everything I truly hope you're able to make some amazing motion graphics with this doodle effect if you would like to learn how to morph anything in After Effects watch this next video don't forget to like subscribe and remember I am Ferg and I'll see you in the next one.